there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with match number three with our Soul Sisters post twin ban. I think this is absolutely keepable hand. It's not the greatest hand ever, but it's very solid. We do want to hit land drops for this the the uh, Squadron Hawks, and we do have to go first turn Windburst Heights unless uh, something better comes in our hand. So we're going to definitely keep this. Two land, three land is ideal, what you want to see in a Soul Sister, but I'd actually even... Uh, say that two starting two lands in your opening hand would be the, the most ideal. We also have a removal spell, a pump spell, and a special resident and a squadron hawk. So that this is actually a very, very good hand against attrition based decks like Jund. Windswept Teeth. And it's a stomping grounds. Could be every deck in the entire meta right now. Uh, Wild in the Cut, okay, so this is going to be another really, really good matchup for us in the form of Zoo. And there's a Flagstones. It's still me a Windburst Heights. So we have all of our mana. We'll just go, we'll actually lead off with another Pure next turn and then go Spectral Processions. Uh, at this point. I still think Pride Mate underneath. This is a bad Windbrist Heights, but Pride Mate's actually good if we get some Soul Sisters. So, we will pass the turn to our opponent. And Wild in the Coddle's weak, no planes. So, he's just going to attack him for two, which is ideal. Um, Zoo's easier than Burn. No, Burn to Coddle's easier than Zoo. They're both very simple matchups. Well, here's the where it can get scary with the Burning Tramissary into, like, a Scavenging Ooze. Into a Goyf. Goyf is a little less threatening right now since there isn't anything in the, in the bin. So here what we're going to do is we will Dishonor the Pure. And now we just need to Stabilize. So next turn we'll have Spectral Processions. They will be used to uh, block Burning Tramissary and Wild in the Coddle. He's just going to bolt me to pump up his Goyf? Sure. I think that taking out a Spectral Procession would have been better. He's down to two cards. I mean, he just wants to finish it off. Grim Lava Mesh will be decent. That's actually a great card, but it will cost him exiling cards. The Sorcery will actually pump up the Goyf. We have a uh, da -da -da, Planes here instead of the Ghost Quarter, so it's just going to be a Spectral Procession. I hope he doesn't find a planes off the top. That'd be the worst case scenario. We will just go block, block, block. Burning Tramissary, Tarmogoyf, Wild in the Coddle. And then I'm still certain he'll probably try to shoot down one of the cards. We have another Spectral Procession after that, or two Squadron Hawks, whichever I deem fit. So we will go just go block, block, block. And I'm, I'm assuming he's going to shoot down a, a... Okay, no, he doesn't. So we take zero damage there. That was not a good trade for him. Experiment one. This is an incredibly zoo-y zoo deck. So... Uh, okay, we're going to be greedy here. Yeah, this puts him out of range. So we're going to go uh, Squadron Hawk. And then Martyr.
And we're in an attempt to gain like 18 life. Do we wait for a skull crack or do we just sack right now? I'm going to say he's going to try to shoot down a squadron hawk in a turn. This martyr is, I think, might be actually busted. Oh, okay, that's fine. I think we just... How in the world is this working? I think it's bugged. We'll see. Well, so he's not going to do... He might have a skull crack. That's annoying if he does. Okay, pay, click on the mana symbol. One. We're going to build one, two. Okay. It's working now. Yesterday was weird. All right. No skull crack. It's over. Good game. That is the power of Martyr. Uh, we could Ranger here, but I think the... Obvious choice is to just spectral processions. And then I'm going to go ahead and attack into the squad and hawk and make him kill it. So his goyf goes down to a 2-3. I have sorcery and creature in the graveyard. And he's just holding stuff back, which is fine. I don't think there's a way he can come back. Another ghost quarter enters the, the field. So that allows us to... Cast the private, which I actually don't care about at this point. I think it's just Ranger. Three cards still in our opponent's hand. I'm just going to get two Soul Sisters. Could have went and got another Martyr. Don't care, though. I think this is actually a better card. Seeing it 25 life. He'll have to bolt it. He's going to use another card. We're attacking in for six here. And then he's got to decide where he wants to go. Targus command. Why didn't he use that? Oh, he might have just drawn into it for the martyr. Because he has no reach. Why... Can't gain life. You may put target land. Yep. Okay. That's fine with me. He goes down to an 11. Oh, he gives him reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Target's command is actually pretty decent. Forgot about that, that aspect that gives reach. But he has to take a, a Grim Lava Master and Experiment 1. I highly disagree with that trade. Now he's just got a Goyf that can't even attack into a... Uh, Ranger, but I don't even care about a Goyf at this point. He only has three cards in hand. He's been extremely lucky not to hit lands. 
Kurt Ape gives me a life. And another Lava Mancer. I guess that's why I didn't care about his, his Lava Mancer. But he could have evolved his Experiment 1 and then use a Tarkas command the next turn. I don't know. It's it's all bad scenarios for our opponent here. Uh, we'll, we'll go Soul Attendant. And then we'll Squad Hawk. Whoops, should have pride made it, I think. I'm I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna path. Whoops, didn't need to shuffle. Yeah, I should have pride made it. Oh well. It's fine. We're so far ahead. Cause the pride may be bigger. We'll path off a Lava Mancer just because it protects us. He can go get a basic planes. And, okay, there's a concession. Yeah, he can't come back from this. So, I don't want paths. Paths are good against Lava Mancer, and that's it. <laughs> we'll bring in... We'll bring two more Arch Champions, of course, and that's probably all I need to do. If I want to get very greedy, you bring in an Archangel Thune, but a lot of times Archangel's just too... We'll bring in a Mark of Asylum. He's running tons of Lava Mancers and Bolts that we know about. So the card that I don't need in this particular matchup is probably a card like... I don't know. A land here. We, we probably don't need another Ghost Quarters. We can safely go down to 20 lands. Especially since we know that he's most likely running Path to Exiles in his deck. I think the Ghost Quarters are their, our weakest link. Do They don't generate the mana, the color mana we want. I mean, we secure the ways to come out. And we're not... Our, our, our curve is fine. We have one 4 cost and a 3 cost. So 20 lands will consistently get us 2 lands. Which is all we need with this deck. And then, uh, when we're down to like turn 6, then we should be able to hit our 3 and 4 lands uh, consistently. I think by, by turn 4, statistically, we should be at Spectre Processions. Turn 5, we should have Ranger of, of Eos Mana. Uh, with the lands that we have, because you know one third of the deck is 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 playing. So uh, out of seven cards, that what is uh, out of the draw, you're gonna have a, a statistically over two lands, and then uh, every draw after that. So first turn, we have a third chance. So by turn three, we should actually have three lands, and then turn uh, four, five, or so, so by turn six, at least we should have a ranger. Okay, anyway, we'll we'll get back into the game. And that's being conservative with the math. This is actually a pretty awful start with the double windbrisk because it takes us back. But our opponent has the mulligan again, so now we're ahead. Uh, with double windbrisk heights, we have our champion. Our champion is just a mess for them to deal with. He is a zoo deck, so our champion isn't just like a silver bullet. But it is still good versus Swiss Spear, Goblin, um, Guide, and Lightning Bolts, and all, all that shenanigans. Kurt Apes. But this Zoo deck seems to be... It might be a Swiss Spearless Zoo deck, which I highly disagree with. I think any aggro deck that has red in it should be running Swiss Spear. I think it's going to outclass Kurt Ape 9 times out of 10. He might be running Loam Lion. Well, that just made it a ton better. So now we at least get a, lot, a life off the Soul Warden or a Bolt out of his hand. He mulled to five. He's done. He needs to find Skullcrack, 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 Skullcrack. And that still won't do it. Here can be a Tarmogoyf. Nope, just a Bolt. And then play in a Coddle. But why would he play in a Coddle first turn unless he just drew into it? All right, so Wimber's height. So again, we're a little bit off with... Jeez, at this point... 
kind of just want another soul attendant underneath. Instead of a Johnny's Prime, it doesn't matter. We're going to get the Art Champion next turn. And I'm sure he just has a ton of burn in his hand. So here we'll put another R champion underneath. The point of this matchup is to stabilize, and then we'll eventually win. R champion is going to be incredibly difficult for him to beat. He could be running Dramoka's commands. Um, Skullcrack also reduces the ability to prevent damage, so protection from red does not prevent the damage. He's filling up his hands, so he's getting lucky with not drawing lands. So here, I think, I think we just, just run out a Mark of Asylum. Now, we'll run out the Spectral Processions. And this should run out an Tarkus Command right now. Three damage and I can't gain life. Skullcrack or a Targus Command. Yep. This allows us to attack in with our good old R Champion. And I'm sure he's going to have another, like, a Targus Command in his hand. It's just, we still do just attack in with everything. Doubt he uses, like, another Tarkus command here. For just one life. Sure. I mean, that's his... His, his way of, of winning this is going to be... Hitting every Tarkus command. And then bolt, bolt... Bolt, Bolt, Lightning Helix, but he's he's down two Targus commands. He can't cast a creature on his turn or I gain two life. So that's a huge uh, portion of his deck. He's already used a Bolt. So that's one of his direct damage spells. And he's down to 11. It's not like he's... Yeah, let's let's put you on a clock, buddy. He could still dish out 14 damage with 5 cards. Is that possible with a burn type deck? But he's got to do it in 2 turns. And I don't think he's going to have the mana next turn to do it. Eleven damage in one turn, not gonna not gonna work. Boros Charm, Lightning Bullet could do seven. We most likely gain two life next turn. I'll probably just throw out a mark of asylum. No, there he can't stop enough. Yeah, that's game. Thought so. And so far, 3-0. We'll go on to the next match. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.